Hey, it's me, Renee. I'm back. And yeah, today you get a video on a Saturday. Because, yeah. So today, at least in Norway, it's International Workers' Day. I suppose if you're watching this in the States, you're like, what? Isn't Labor Day like Workers' Day in September? Well, no, not for Norwegians. And we also, we call it uh, 1st of May, we call it International, International Workers' Day. And I kind of have a feeling that the only people who don't celebrate on 1st of May is you from the from United States. So you're kind of weird here, really. So yeah, because it's a national holiday here in Norway, and because I come from a family that focuses on our way of the working, working class and, uh, and working uh, rights and all that stuff, I'm going to do a little video on it. So, yeah, first of all, okay, I'm going to find books based around, like, unionizing and stuff like that. But then I discovered I don't really have that many unionizing books. I think, maybe, I just remember, I think maybe this one that came up last year or two years ago that I heard about, but I haven't read it yet. Uh, of course, I suppose I could have included other books that at the moment I kind of forgot about. But, yeah, this is a little mix of books that I feel like kind of works. So yeah, um, you know what, yeah, I'm going to start with the obvious one, because the kind of the one that I kind of knew from the get-go I'm going to include in the video. It is Things a Bright Girl Can Do by Sally Nichols. I've talked about this one before, but I'll now start talking about it, because it's so good. Uh, so this one is about uh, girls during the 1910s, 19, like just like two or three years before the First World War, so I suppose... It starts in 1912, sorry, it starts in 1914 actually, just, just before the World War starts. And it starts with this different girls, well, teens, they're not girls, female teens. It seems weird to call a girl if you're 16. I suppose you're technically like still a girl. Young woman, okay, these young, young females, young females, I'm going to call, call, call them young females. Uh, they, they're kind of campaigning for female rights and the right to vote. Right to vote, right to vote. You have Evelyn, who's rich, but she wants to go to university. You have blah, 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 blah. May, that's both a suffragette and also a Quaker. So she's she's kind of uh, in on the outside in different ways. And she's also lesbian. So she's tri triple uh, weed in a way, like different than the norm. And then you also have Nell, who's a uh, working class. Like, the, okay, so Evelyn is rich. Nell, oh, sorry, Nell. Uh, May is middle class, and Nell is working class. But all these females are fighting for the right to vote. And yeah, so it's kind of like stick it to the man, trying to get your votes and stuff like that. And it's just an amazing, amazing book. It takes place. Mainly, I suppose, over one or two years, but I think this kind of like at the end, it's kind of like, well, yeah, it takes place over like two or three years, mostly one of them, but like it kind of moves a bit forward in time. It's not just one year. And I really like how it kind of, you kind of really grow with the characters and stuff. It's just, yeah, an amazing read. Check it out. And then we have A Girl Called Shameless, which is about. Uh, yeah, Izzy, Izzy O'Neill, she's being um, called shameless, she, she's being slut-shamed because double standards and checked in the United States, it takes place in the United States, and this, this is kind of like her story of fighting back and telling people like, I can enjoy being a female, enjoy being sexual and enjoy being my, in my own body and kind of fighting back in a little ways. And yeah, this is the second one in the duology, so I don't really want to say that much about this one specifically. But yeah, it's about it's about Issy and how she reacts to being flushed, basically, I would say. Then you have Most Likely by Sorry Watson. So this is about but these three, so these four young females, and they go to high school together, and they. One of them is kind of a very active, and like the, well, some of them are very active and some of them are less active. Like, uh, one is kind of, uh, she's, uh, I can't remember who's, okay, well, one of them, like, is 
always volunteering and always doing different stuff. One of them is kind of like their school person and all that stuff. But they all have in common that they want to save their their park that's close to them. So they kind of like go in for like trying to stop the man and trying to stop uh, the municipality to take down the park and make apartments instead. So yeah, it's uh, fighting the man in a way. And yeah, check it out. Very good read. Then you have, yeah, and maybe if you saw this video yesterday, you'll recognize this book, but it is Next Together. Uh, so in this one, actually, I don't really think I talked about this one, that, that aspect so much last video, but yeah, in this book, well, actually, there's several, like, it books, the books takes place over different, like, mm, timelines. So there's different timelines where you kind of have to fight the man. At one point, they're Scottish who have to fight the English, like back in the old days when Scotland was independent. And then you have fighting a corrupt government. And yeah, you have different stuff like that. And um, yeah, amazing read. Then you have Not Your Villain or Not Your, the Not Your series, where in this whole series by C.B. Lee, it's about a group of teens, well, teens and also their families and friends who are trying to stop the government from being assets, more or less. Like, it's not Hunger Games dystopian style, but it's it's not a perfect world. It's less than ideal. I'd say, I'd say like that. Yeah, it's there's bad stuff going on that's going to disrupt. This is the second book, and there's going to be four books. Yeah, four books. Five books? Four or five. Maybe five books? There's going to be five or four books in the series. I've read the first three anyway. And yeah, they're also amazing. Why well, we'll talk about a bad book, but yeah, you know. Then we have Cinder by Mercer Mayer. So in this one, it's about standing up to the government of Luna. You, because Luna is has like this in this series. The moon or Luna is colonized, and the people who live there, some of them are idiots and well, assets. And yeah, this is kind of a bit about like starting a revolution in a way, in a small way, I would say. And um, yeah. Then you have Julius Takes a Breath. <laughs> takes a Breath. Julius Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. So this is about Juliet. She, it's her first uh, summer after high school. She goes to live with one of, her, one of her role models. And it's kind of about stopping the patriarchy because like it's a very feminist movement, but it's also about intersectional feminism, like how being brown and feminist and uh, lesbian is different from being white and feminist and these different needs and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just an amazing, amazing read. Deserves all the hype it gets. It, do, it gets a lot of hype, and it definitely, definitely deserves it. Check it out. Check it out.